tunajipiga kifua kila kukicha na kusema ya kwamba Kenya ni taifa lililo na demokrasia bora zaidi kilinganishwa na mataifa mengine barani Afrika. Lakini ukweli wa mambo ni kwamba hii sio demokrasia. Na kama ni demokrasia, ni demokrasia ya kijambazi. Demokrasia ya kuwa watoto wa Kenya kila kukicha kwa sababu ya ufisadi. Hatu wa kadhaa zilichukuliwa na baadhi ya watu wakafanywa uchunguzi na hata kupimwa damu. Wachache waliopata matokeo yao walithibitishwa damu yao kuwa na chembe chembe za sumu ya LED. Huku matokeo ya idadi kubwa ya watu yakinyamaziwa na kutumwa katika kikao cha kamati ya afya ya seneti. So as we speak several tests have been done we are yet to get uh, results so that we can uh, we can agree on the way forward there are possibilities that uh, somebody somewhere should should be held to account someone should be should, criminal proceedings should should happen because then how did we at that point allow uh, for such a thing to happen because remember it was done before we came into office and i'm glad it was stopped when we were in office i think we should be able first of all to establish the the licensing process because it have it would have required a NEMA approval. So how did NEMA approve that project eight years ago? Because eight years ago, NEMA was already in place. So first of all, who approved it? The whole line that authorized that project, depending on, uh, on the outcome of the results, should be able to account. Was there any handover that involved any information about what the Ministry of Health had discovered about Oino? Now, to be honest, there was no such handover. And I think maybe that's a gap because uh, maybe there was mistrust because there was a different system that was running before and then you have a new system. So usually people try to hold on to information. I think this is common everywhere. No. 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 So ikija tufiki wakati huo, tupate kuona kuwa the contamination levels are too high. Uh, Nina hakik kuwa kama county, tutakuja na, tutakuja na other solutions. Ama sehemu mbadala ambapo tuta, tutawapeleka wakazi wa wanuhuru. And I can tell you we have written severally to the relevant uh, authorities as to we are waiting to see the results. We are anxious because these are our people that ought to be protected and be looked after. It's an ongoing process. But uh, we have the lab reports, uh, and we are going to. We have asked for a thorough assay of the, those samples from uh, government chemists. This is just a new chapter of, I'm sure, very many uh, an, uh, an observed or uh, not keenly uh, managed uh, upcoming. Uh, back street uh, factories that are placed in close proximity with the uh, residences especially slums Kutafuta ukweli wa mambo haya tuliamua kulizamia swala hili nyeti na kuandaa mikakati maalum ya kupima damu ya wakazi wa uwino uhuru udongo akili ya watoto na maji ya visima pamoja na mto waliokuwa wakitumia It's an act of irresponsibility to let any child go through what the people of Oino who have gone through. Huku umaukizidi kuteketea katika uchunguzi wetu, tulibaini majina ya watu kadhaa kutajwa kuhusika na tuhuma hizo. Kando na wamiliki halali wa kampuni hiyo, 
Shantilal Vora na mwanawe Umar Vora. Wa kwanza ni mbunge wa Nyali Hezron Owiti ambaye pia anahusishwa na umiliki wa jengo hili. Wa pili ni aliyekuwa mbunge wa Changamwe Ramadan Saif Kajembe ambaye pia kwa wakati huo alikuwa waziri msaidizi wa mazingira. Watatu ni afisa wa afya Mombasa John Ndungu na hatimaye mamlaka ya taifa ya mazingira Nema. Tuliwatafuta wote. Mbunge wa Nyali Awitibolo alikubali kuhojiwa nasi kuweka wazi masuala ya kumiliki jengo hilo na ni hatua gani yeye binafsi kama kiongozi alichukua baada ya kugundua wa Kenya waliangamia kutokana na sumu ya LED. Siku ya mahojiano ilipofika, juhudi zetu za kuwasiliana naye ziliambulia patupu. kizungumza na mwanzangu John Alanamu na uh, tulielewana tuweze kufanya mahojiano hayo leo mwendo wa saa kumi lakini sasa ni saa kumi na dakika tangia saa tisa tumejaribu kumpigia hapo kei simu na mara ya mwisho na nadhani ilikuwa mchana asubuhi asubuhi hivi aliposema kwamba tutakutana saa kumi lakini sasa imekuwa ma, ni mazoea kupokea hapo kei simu I've been accused of using uh, getting money be getting funded to fight uh, metal refinery i've been fought very hard by awiti and uh, some other politicians who have spoken on, on this issue i don't have the muscle to fight them but the people have been with me and i have my voice and i've kept going mimi ni munyonge yeye ni mpunga nyali lakini nina kama vile ukiwa na imani sababu sasa ni kuweka Mungu mbele. Nikiwa na imani hata mwenye pesa na ukiwa mnyonge na Mungu awe pamoja na tunaweza shinda hii vita. Sababu hata hata maskini anaweza kuingia ufalme wa Mungu. Mimi ni maskini lakini kwa Mungu nasifikira naweza kutopoa hiyo vita. Kelvin Akifa. Kelvin Akifa mpaka hiyo kesi ifanyike Kelvin mpaka awekwe mochari mpaka hiyo kesi yake ishe ndio Kelvin asikwe sababu hiyo ni ndio kitu yenye nimejua kimesababisha Kelvin sasa hii hata Kelvin akifa saa hii sasa ndio inaweza kuwa mbaya hiyo mpaka kesi yake ishe hata kama kesi itaenda mwaka kani mheshimiwa bolo nilijaribu kuongea naye hata alituita ofisini kwake tukaenda tulipofika akasema mwana nyingi nataka hii maneno ile kampuni ni yangu mama wewe acha maneno mengi useme hii habari ya kuandamana haina maana na hii kampuni hii Kenya ni watu wenye pesa. Na ukisema ya kwamba mtandamana nyinyi ndio mtapoteza. Jambo lingine ile plot ni yangu. La sio hivyo amisha mtoto ama ufanye nini? Muame mali pale. Kamwambia wewe wewe ndio ulikuja ukatupata pale. Kwanza ili kwa ni kampuni ya kutengeneza magari na wewe ulikuja tu juzu juzu umetupata pale. Nitaama nitaenda wapi kama mimi mwenyewe nimezaliwa hapa nitaenda wapi? Asa hapo akatufukuza Awiti, yes, we have approached him and he has actually come to address us on several occasions concerning this issue. And what did he say? Uh, in one forum was when um, Kajembe was assistant minister and member of parliament for Changamwe and they shared a podium with uh, Awiti to address us and they told us that uh, there was nothing like lead poisoning and uh, this, was, this uh, was my creation and I was inciting the public and actually I should be dealt with. That was his words, uh, Awiti. said, I've created, I've brought employment for you. You are poor people, you should work and stop uh, this nonsense. So that was uh, the first time. After that, he came into the community to address the community. And I thought he was coming with solution, but he, he threatened the community. He told them if anyone spoke about this, I'll, I would demolish. He said he owns the land and he would demolish all the structures and they'll be homeless. So he, instead of helping, he threatened the community. Ramadan Saif Kajembe, aliyekuwa mbunge wa changamwe na waziri msaidizi katika wizara ya mazingira, licha ya kutafuta mahojiano ya moja kwa moja naye, 
alidinda kuitukia mwito wetu na kuishia kuzungumza naye kupitia njia ya simu Ramata was more public health than environment mm -hmm. Ya nambia ulikuwa minister environment mm -hmm. Na hapo na hapo mahali ya kwenda hapo kuwa send hiyo problem mm -hmm. Alikuwa assistant minister of public health Bana machake mm -hmm. What in how he finish that issue I don't know mm -hmm. Na hiyo kitu imefanyika Sire and half years ago mm -hmm. Before general election mm -hmm. Sasa kama ilikuwa kuna problem Mpato wakajepe So wakatuo labda tomge kutu mkasema toelezo lakini mheshimiwa nakumbuka kuna wakati mmoja ulikuwa naibu wa waziri wa masuala ya nini environment uh, na uh, ilikuwa katika kipindi hiyo tunazungumzia ndio na kwambia the matter was more public health kwa nini labda yeah, so, so, labda so environment data minister alikuja naam ni wa public health kuja kusota ofisiwa environment lakini kama kama kiongozi na tena na, na tena nikwambie mheshimiwa mhm mm Assistant ministers, they are working under the uh, instructions of the ministers. Me likuta tu yo maulen hosa na kwa sorted out in our public health. Okay. Na minister me kujia na sisi ministers, mm -hmm. tuna collective responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Lugazi ya minister of environment is just to draw the attention mm -hmm. of, of, of ministers concerned yapa kuna hii na dani mkapanya. Lakini mweshimio nauliza, kama jambo hili halifai, uh, na wewe ndiyo mbunge, wakati uo likuwa mbunge wa changamwe, watu wanaumia ni watu wako, utakubali vipi, na ukumbuka ulikuwa ndani ya serikali, na bado ulikuwa mbunge wa eneo hilo. Utakubali mena, vipi mena, watu wako mena, waumia. Nataka ni kuambie katika hao watu wa hiyo, hiyo industry, no. hakuna mtu wamekuja niambia hapa kuna kiwanda chama mama chafu, Mm -hmm. Nobody approached me. What could I do? So Unajua for... kama kiongozi. Mm -hmm. Hello. No. Kama kiongozi watu ndo wanakuja wanakwambia hapa kuna tabu. Nobody came to me. Lakini mheshimiwa nakumbuka Na, wakati ena, wakati mmoja kwenye runinga ulionekana ukiwa katika eneo hilo katika moja wapo ya maandamano. Hapana nitakueleza how it happened. No. Unajua hiyo kiwanda imekuwa rented katika godown ya bwana Awiti. Ni Awiti hiyo godown. Haya, Awiti ambaye ni MP sasa. Uwe MP wa Nyali. Eh ndio mwenye hiyo godown aliweka hiyo industry. Naam. Sasa mimi nilipita siku moja pale karibu corrugated sheets. Mhm. Mm Nikamwona nikaona watu. Nikamwona na huyu Awiti. Mhm. Mm ambaye ni ndio ame rent hao watu. Naam. Mimi ni kasimama, kasa what is going on here? Ni kasimama hapo, ni kasimama Ndiyo sasa ni kamputa witi, ya kasema hawa watu wana wanamana Na wangu na hiyo factory ni kwa renda tu kwenye koto Ni kamuliza witi ye, hawa wana hawa utayamaliza Haka nabia utayamaliza, mi kandoka zati Tena hapo ni lijiona watu tu mi kupita kwa njia Nobody came to me and Hata baada ya kuhona hizo kumayo hawa watu kwa njia what I know is during the second during the second demonstration I could see him on the screen. So he was the one leading there. The yes. In the screen I could see him, he was reading. But wasn't he assistant environment minister? Now, he ask me. now that's why I didn't know. That's why I was asking myself and me quietly. I was asking how is he doing and he was the team leader. I don't know. But I, because that was not my line of politics, I could not ask. Yes. <laughs> Immediately he moved out of uh, the politics. For the, all the years, for all the years, he has been the uh, assistant minister and uh, our, our MP in Changamwe. He has never even tried to call me to discuss issues pertaining to health. But immediately he moved out of uh, being, uh, he was looking for the Senate or post of the Senate. One evening he called me. Told me, Mr. Dongo, I have a problem in my house. Please come and do inspection my place. Nee, nee, nee. I said, okay. Personally, I have everybody. In his house. He is in the house. So, no. So I sent an officer to do. He was saying he was being attacked by mosquitoes. He has a problem with mosquitoes. So I sent a team to go and do inspection, and uh, he was given a lot of work to do. <laughs> the other still keeps me happy because during the time was he could not see me, but after he after the office he could see me. And this is the problem is he had kept so many tires of vehicles in the compound which were breeding points of 
the mosquitoes. So he told me, told him, the only thing you can do, throw in these tires out of the company, see that's the glass. <laughs> he was saying, please come with the pumps, all machines, spray, spray my house. But before you do that, let's come and see where the problem is lying. We came to find these tires and the glass. <laughs> that just still gives me a bit. <laughs> Kilichofuata ni kuwahusisha wataalamu wa kupima damu kutoka kampuni ya Lancet. Kubaini iwapo maradhi hayo yanatokana na sumu ya lead, yangali yapo miongoni mwa watoto hawa, wazee, vijana na kina mama. Siku iliyofuatia, tuliwasili tukiwa tumejihami kiasi cha haja tukiandamana na madaktari wawili wa kupima damu kitwa Mbarak Suleiman Barak uh, mimi nimetoka kwa hii kampuni inaitwa Pathologist Lancet nimekuja kuangalia kuna aina ya madini kwa Kiingereza tunaita heavy metal inaitwa lead kuangalia kwenye damu zenu <laughs> macho baby talia tu manaki Nyumba baada ya nyumba tulipima watoto. Ngoyo tunipoti. Sorry. Na hatimaye wazee, kina mama, vijana na wafanyikazi waliokuwa wakifanya kazi katika kampuni hiyo. Kwa ujumla tulipima watu hamsini na watano in such an environment eh, lead normally is ingested through or orally through inhalation the emissions of dust the community might inhale the dust and the the lead contained dust will accumulate in their bodies Hatu kukomea hapo bali pia tuliwahusisha wataalamu wa kupima maji na udongo kutoka kampuni ya SGS. Tulipima mahali tofauti tofauti kuanzia pale kampuni hiyo ilipokuwa ikimwaga taka kwenye mto huu wa Jomvu pamoja na kitongoji cha Owino Uhuru. They should never have been allowed to do anything like that in this country. Kwa wakati huu wote tulipokuwa tukiendelea na kazi ya kupima maji na udongo, watoto walizidi kuonekana wakiteka maji hayo na kuwapelekea wazazi wao pasi na kujua matatizo wanaozidi kujiongezea. Tuliwachukua pia watoto tisa na kuwapeleka katika maeneo ya Tuda Mombasa kwa mtaalamu Lilian Awimbo angaliwa na madaktari wa akili iwapo akili zao zimepungua ama ni sawia na akili za watoto wengine walio na umri sawia nao kwani baadhi ya wazazi walishuku tabia za watoto wao the first stage is um, we are going to take them through a test so to speak that is uh, going to be a, to access their psychomotor basically uh, what we are looking for at that stage is how their mind work the speed at what the mind works and will be able to access um, the development of their mind and then from there we are going to ha also have um, work with them with uh, like play therapy items uh, materials this way we'll be able to uh, um, establish their skills are they able to coordinate Uh, things like colors, shapes, sizes, uh, different things, maybe material, material things. And then we are going to also work with them um, still in play therapy, but for the coordination. Some of the things, some of the th what we are going to put them through, we'll, we'll be able to establish. Are they able to coordinate what they are working with? Are they able to process yeah, some of the things that they are seeing? Baada ya shughuli hii yote kukamilika, tuliondoka na kuelekea katika maabara ya Lancet, mahali ambapo damu hiyo zilinukuliwa na kusafirishwa hadi Afrika Kusini.
Kwa kipindi cha miaka minane wakazi wa Uwino Uhuru wamekuwa wakiugua na kufa kifo cha pole pole huku serikali ikijitia hamnazo. Kwa sasa damu hizi zitasafirishwa moja kwa moja hadi Afrika Kusini kwa uchunguzi zaidi na ambapo itachukua takriban siku kama 15 hivi kwa matokeo kamili. Kwa wakati huo sisi nasi tutakuwa tumeelekea moja kwa moja hadi India kukueleza mengi usio yajua. अब तो मेरा दिल जागे न सोता है इंडिया ने तैफा लेने वातु ज़ाइडी या बिलियनी मोज़ा न निको हापा मुंबई इंडिया कटी का ज़िरा यंगु या कुवसा का वामिलिकी वाविली वाकंपुनी या केन्या मेटो रिफाइनरी ना मेटो रिफाइनरी मुंबई इंडिया योगोनी मो वातु ज़ाइडी या बिलियनी मोज़ा Kipiga lundi kila kona kuwatafuta wa miliki wa kampuni mbili husika. Kampuni ya Meto Refinery na ile ya Kenya Meto Refinery ilio kuwa katika maeneo ya changamu kabla ya kufungwa. Na wa miliki wake kutoweka sawia na ile ya Meto Refinery ilio kuwa katika kitongoji cha Owino Uhuru. Kibaru wa kikuu hapa kilikuwa cha kuwasaka wa miliki Shantilal Vora na Kumarkant Vora wa Meto Refineries Chandra Pakash Meta, Kamlesh Meta na Navin Patel wa Kenya Meto Refinery Changamwe Matajiri waliotoweka Kenya baada ya harakati zao kuleta maafa huku serikali ya Kenya ikisema haiwajui uh, we, we had to establish the ownership from this uh, company the of register, the, the register of company, and we didn't find his name. Who are the local investors in this business? No, I don't know. I don't know. As when a, when a company is registered, from the EI point of view, we don't start to investigate who is a local, who is not a local. Bada ya uchunguzi wa kina, tulifanikiwa kujua machimbo ya miliki wa meto refinery. Siku iliofuata, Baada ya safari ya kilomita mia moja na hamsini, tulimzamia katika kampuni yake. Hello, hello. How are you? You're good? Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah. We are from Kenya. Kenya. Yes, we have come to visit this factory. Yes, we are doing stories about uh, trade and business. And um, the people who, um, do you know Mr. Shanti Vora? Shanti Vora, yeah. Yes, yes. And, and uh, Kumar and Kumar, uh, Kumar also is uh, in Kenya only right now. He's in Kenya right now. In Kenya and, uh, and you know uh, Shanti Vora and Kumar Vora, mm -hmm. they used to have a, a business in Kenya, right? Yeah, correct, exactly. You say Kumar is in Kenya right yeah, now? In Kenya, actually, in that time, tell you, mm. uh, whatever they, uh, was earlier that Shanti Vora, Shanti Lal Vora and Kumar, all the unit we have taken over. Mm -hmm. uh, even Kenya plant as well as uh, Bombay, uh, as well as Indonesia. Yeah. Uh, so oh, you've taken over? We have taken over. We are running. In, in future, we will run the show. OK. Oh, in Kenya, in future. Oh, so you've, you've uh, even in Kenya, the refinery in uh, Kenya, you also, at the moment, it is, uh, there is no production work. Yeah. Uh, in future, we will start step by step. So you oh, you, you're going to continue? Yeah, we, no, we are going to continue. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, um, tell me, so where is uh, Shanti and Kumar? Did they sell this business to you? in Indonesia, uh, Shanti Lala, and uh, Kumar is in Kenya. Just two weeks back, he has come to Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, any other things, uh, it is any problem? No, 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 no. it's not a problem. I wanted to know why Shanti Lala and Kumar uh, closed in Kenya. If you can go open, when I went to there's an uh, internal problem, some losses are there, come there. Early there was good uh, business was there in Kenya, I, according to my knowledge. Hatu kumpata lakini meneja wa kampuni ya New Metro Refinery alionekana mwenye matumaini makubwa ya kuifufua kampuni ya Kenya hivi karibuni. When do you intend to open back in Kenya? Actually, here also just recently I have come over and become secure. And slowly we are developing here. 
and next step we'll take it at Kenya. And as we talk now, there's a third transfer, which is on my desk. And these are issues we want to address first. Bada ya safari ndefu hatimaye tumeweza kufika hapa India katika makao makuu ya kampuni ya Kenya Metal Refinery. Na hapa tumebaini ya kwamba a, kampuni ya Metal Refinery iliyoko kule Kenya Mombasa katika kitongoji cha Uino Uhuru hatimaye kitaweza kununuliwa na wanunuzi wengine wapi ambao watamiliki kampuni hiyo na kuanzisha biashara nyingine. Licha ya kutuarifu kuwa Kumar Vora alikuwa Kenya na kudinda kutupa namba yake ya simu tuliondoka na kusaka mmiliki wa pili wa kampuni ya Kenya Metal Refineries Kamlesh Meta ambaye alikuwa mmoja wa miliki wa kampuni hiyo Hapa tulifanikiwa kumpata licha ya kujitia hamnazo na kujifanya kutojua tuliyokuwa tukiyazungumzia Hello good afternoon How are you Yeah we're looking for CP Meta we are from Nairobi. We we did our own research. Regarding what? CP Meta used to run a business in Nairobi, and we wanted to ask him a few questions about that. We are journalists from Nairobi. M J, and Navin Navin Patel. Navin Patel and M J. Yes. Yes. But they closed the company. They sold off. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we know. yeah, we we know that they they sold off and they closed the company. And we have his contact email address. Mm -hmm. He will send everything to your email address. Send what? But he doesn't even know what we are asking. Yeah. So we need to ask him the question. He will send his contact details on your email address. Right. I cannot give. I am not authorized to give his personal details to anybody. What is your name? My name is Kamlesh. 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 Were you part of the partners uh, of the company back in Kenya, Kamlesh? No. Do you know where the other partners are? I don't know about them. He was in the company. I don't think this office. You're in this office. Okay. You can pass a message along to him that uh, it's in his interest for I him to meet us. I will keep it in on Be Yeah, because uh, there is a Senate committee that is investigating what's happening. Kila mmoja alitutaka tuwache anwani zetu. Akiahidi kuwa siliana nasi badae. Hakuna hata mmoja alietujibu. Watatu ni Navil Patel, mmiliki wa Sham Oxides ambaye pia alikuwa mmiliki wa Kenya Metal Refinery na aliyekuwa kinunua madini ya lead kutoka Kenya hadi kwenye kampuni yake ya Sham Oxide hivyo basi kujinufaisha zaidi. Katika ofisi yake tulimpata babake na meneja wa fedha ambaye alitupasulia mbarika. Used to purchase uh, the lead. Yeah. All right. Um, how long did you uh, purchase that lead? That lead for? Well, one and a half year we did that business. If I'm not wrong. Yeah. I joined this company once uh, eight months back only. Mm -hmm. But uh, going through the records, I come to know that the business for one one and a half year with Kenya Metal. If I'm not wrong. Kenya Metal Refineries. Yeah. Okay. For how long have they been exporting uh, from Kenya to here? I think one one and a half year. Um, what was the extent in terms of uh, finances? How much would you pay Kenya Metal Refineries from those records? They used to pay forty thousand dollar according to the what it called bank rate and all. Yeah. Siku iliyofuata, miliki wa sham oxide na Kenya Metal Refinery alitupigia simu na tamko lake la kwanza lilikuwa la kuitusi serikali ya Kenya. Hello. Hello, Mr. Patel. Yeah. Good evening. My name is John Allen Namu. Uh -huh. Yeah, I've been trying to call you. I'm a journalist from uh, Kenya, from Nairobi in Kenya. Okay. And um, okay. I'm currently in India uh -huh. doing a number of stories about uh, trade. Okay. And I understand uh, you used to uh, work with or had shareholding in uh, Kenya Metal Refineries Limited? Right. At present, I have nothing to say. You have nothing to say about that matter. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Why? What? What happened specifically? Uh, okay. 
was a very bad experience. It's all bullshit with the Indian government. What so happened? I don't just want to again reopen. Yeah, what happened with our government? Um, that's what we're yeah, trying to establish. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, I am not interested. No. Well, okay, let me let me just ask one question. Licha ya wote kudinda kuhojiwa nasi, tulifanikiwa kumpata mmoja wa mkurugenzi mkuu wa kampuni ya Kenya Metro Refinery, aliyemwaga mtama mbele ya kuku wengi. Kwa sasa, amepiga kambi hapa India. They had all the permissions from Nema and from the health. There was no objection or no no authorities that came and stopped them from operating. Till I was around. Do you think that should have been of course, yes. They should have, uh, if, you know, investigated and before giving them the, the permission, ensured that a trial run was done in, the, in their presence, lead levels taken, uh, or what do you call specimens taken, periodic checking should have taken place. But I don't think uh, the authorities out there uh, did pay much attention to this, these facts. What was your first impression? when you find out that there are people living there? I felt sorry for them. And I had no words because all these permissions were given by the Kenyan authorities. I was made to leave. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't leave on my own. I was made to leave. And uh, there was nothing I could do about it. There was nothing I could do about it. Mingairi ya hayo Salvio alitueleza mambo ya kuchukiza yaliyokuwa yakitendewa Kenya katika kampuni hiyo. We had a, a team of people from India who had experience in lead manufacturing and the way they used to talk to the the local Kenyans was not up to my approval and I kept on reprimanding them that look they may be Kenyans they may be employed by us, but yet they are our brothers. And I kept warning them, look, you're, you're doing this against the, uh, the Kenyan law. And whether it's a law or not, treat and respect your fellow workers with, with respect. What Why? is that slang in, in India? Like mother church and things like that. This plant came with uh, several expatriates. These expatriates have not been to school. They were using uncouth means to uh, reach the objectives and mostly they were mistreating Africans, if so to speak. Uh, I don't know whether they thought that uh, Africans are very low caliber people, they were not very bright or they do not feel any pain or things like that. In India, Africans are called magicians. But uh, uh, Hindis have got other abusive words like chuti. Chuti means as an, an idiot. Okay, so most, and he's not like abusing you, he's calling you. Chuti, come. That is not a very nice thing to do. Hatimae tulirudi Kenya na kupokea matokeo ya uchunguzi wa damu, maji, udongo na akili za watoto. Watu wote ya msini na tano tulio pima walipatikana kuwa na chembe chembe za madini ya led. Kati ya hawa msini na tano, ishirini na moja walikuwa na viwango vya sehemu moja kati ya milioni na sehemu inne kati ya milioni. Watu ishirini na tatu walikuwa na madini hayo kati ya sehemu tano hadi tisa kwa milioni. Kati ya watu tulio pima ni Filimon Atieno, Mtoto mwenye umri wa miaka miwili na nusu na mwenzake Salma Khamisi aliyekuwa na sehemu sita hadi nane kwa milioni ya sumu ya led kwenye damu yake. Watu kumi na moja walikuwa na madini hayo ya led mwilini kwenye viwango zaidi ya kumi kwa milioni. Kulingana na shirika la afya duniani WHO hamna vipimo salama mwilini iwapo una chembe chembe hata moja ya madini. Maisha yako kiafya yamo hatarini. Kati ya tuliopima, walio kuwa na kiwango kikubwa cha sumu hiyo ya led, kwenye damu yao ni Kelvin Mosioka, akiwa na sehemu 12 kwa milioni. Daniel Bazil, kiwango cha 11 kwa milioni. Catherine Akelo, 12 kwa milioni. Joan Mary, mwenye umri wa miaka minane, 
14 kwa milioni. Brenda Wakio mwenye umri wa miaka minne akiwa na 20 kwa milioni. Kiwango cha juu zaidi kati ya watoto wote tuliopima. Wafanyakazi wote waliokuwa wakifanya kazi ya kuyayusha betri hizo walikuwa na sehemu kati ya 16 hadi 30 kwa milioni. Viwango vikubwa zaidi na hatari kwa afya zao. Aliyevunja rekodi ya uchafuzi wa damu katika mwili wake alikuwa ni Hamis Dio mwenye umri wa miaka 32 na, na aliyekuwa na sehemu 33 kwa milioni. I would say that is not safe because even in drinking water uh, when you talk about sources of drinking water the maximum permissible limit is 0.05 parts per million yeah. so above one is not safe in my opinion katika matokeo ya udongo watafiti walibaini kuwa sehemu ya juu ya udongo ilikuwa na asilimia kubwa ya sumu ya lead ikilinganishwa na ya kati udongo Ulio kuwa na sumu ya led ulikuwa tishio kubwa kwa watoto na wanawake. Kwa upande wa maji, hapa kupatikana kwa sumu ya yote, lakini watafiti waliamini kuwa haya yalitokana na alkaliniti ya maji yaliyochujwa na kuvivia ardhini kutokana na mvua ama mkondo wa maji ya mto. Katika matokeo ya ripoti ya akili ya watoto, Ripoti hiyo ilisema watoto wote isipokuwa wawili walikuwa wepesi wa kufikiria kwa haraka na kutoa jawabu ya moja kwa moja. Aidha, watoto hao huwa huru pasi na kusukumwa na iwapo mzazi atafanya hivyo basi inakuwa vigumu kwao kando na kuongezea mawazo zaidi. Ripoti hiyo pia ilisema kuwa watoto wana shida ya kufahamu haraka hivyo basi kuwasumbua na kuwapa changamoto darasani. Tofauti na watoto wengine walio na ndoto za kimaisha, watoto wa owino uhuru hawana ndoto. Kwani ndoto zao zimefanywa tasa na sumu hatari ya lead. We have to stop compromising our morals because we are selling out the future of our children. All the children in Owino Uhuru IQs have been affected. So we have a generation of poor people who cannot even get to their full potential now because their IQs have been compromised. What have we done? We have created another generation of the same problem. Mimi nina machungu na meto alifanya sababu ni kama ile kamuni yenye ilikuja kutuua. Kwa sasa kila mmoja anajitia hamnazo huku ripoti ya seneti bado ikisalia ofisini mwao. One thing I know is that I'll not give up. I want to see the end of this. It will be so so heartbreaking if no one out there has a heart to act on what is going on with those people. These are human beings. They did not choose to be born the way they were born. They did not choose to be born poor or in Owino Uhuru. Baadhi ya mapendekezo yaliyotolewa na wataalamu ni kwamba eneo hilo linafaa kutengwa mara moja na kuwa mbali na wananchi kwani sumu ya lead bado imo udongoni kwa kiwango cha hali ya juu sana. Eneo la mto pia ilipendekezwa izibwe kwani sumu ya lead bado imo. Ahmed Ali makala ya jichopevu KTN leo